We would like to welcome everyone on another virtual conference hosted by the Philippine Institute of the 21st Century Educators and the Philippine Association of Social Sciences and Educational Majors. We would like to recognize our participants. We have a very diverse participants for today. We have teachers from public schools, private institutions, state universities, and colleges. So we would like to recognize uh, our participant from Aklan State University, Banga Aklan. We have Casparo Baripedro. Good morning, sir. Also would like to say good morning to our participant from Mindanao State University Main Campus, Marawi City, Mom Grace Rafal. And also good morning to our participant from Carlos Hilado Memorial State College in Negros Occidental. Good morning, Mom Teresa Lopo. So good morning once again. We are currently viewed on different social media platforms. We are now live via Zoom and we're also live in YouTube in the Pies 21 channel. Late telecast of this event will be uploaded at the official Facebook page of Philippine Institute of the 21st Century Educators later tonight. Okay, once again, good morning. My name is Isidro Villa Jr. I am currently a scholar student under the program of Master's in Education, major in Educational Technology and Communications at Raja Mangala University of Technology in Sanyaburi, Bangkok, Thailand. And like everyone else, day by day also experienced or confronted by different challenges in our academic life, both as a teacher and as a student. So our organization has come up with an idea of organizing a virtual conference series help educators to cope up with the challenges of this new normal. We have already successfully organized eight virtual conferences at the moment, and this next virtual conference is entitled Gamifying Online Classroom, New and Engaging Approach in Teaching. This aims to empower teachers amidst this pandemic, since nobody has seen it coming, nobody has been prepared for it. But as a 21st century educators and mentors, the best time to be ready is now. Before we start, a quick reminder to our participants, your participation is highly encouraged during the open forum or the question and answer segment to follow right after the talk proper of our speaker. You may comment your question in the comment box on YouTube and Zoom. We will notify you ahead if you are recognized to ask the question. Now we would like to request everyone to please be silent for the prayer. 
Let us bow our head and put ourselves in the holiness of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Almighty and ever-loving God, we glorify and thank Thee your name. You have showered us with so much blessings, and your presence continuously reminds us of your faithfulness and guidance. We humbly ask you to shower our speaker today of your greatest inspiration, so that she may be able to share the most of her knowledge and heart on this topic. We may also absorb the invaluable knowledge and put it into practice, what we have learned today. We pray that you bless all the committees in charge, that they may be able to fulfill their task responsibly, that the objectives they have set may all be achieved. Your infinite blessing would mean the success of this webinar. We may also be living witnesses of your genuine love through the enactment of knowledge acquired through this activity. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, so at this juncture, let me introduce to you our guest speaker this morning. So she is a native of the municipality of Sara from the province of Iloilo. She is a graduate of West Visaya State University with a degree of Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in Social Studies, Batch 2001. She took up Master's of Education, major in Social Studies, but finished a degree of Master's in Management, major in Educational Management. She is currently pursuing her Doctor of Philosophy, major in, in Educational Leadership. She was a former teacher at ICF Christian School, the Iloilo Integrated School, Fort San Pedro National High School, which was still in the Philippines. She garnered the award of the most, uh, most outstanding teacher of Iloilo City in 2008 and 2010. She was also awarded as an outstanding teacher in Doha, Qatar in August 2015, and currently she is a teacher of the year at the Ivana Yodora Kian High School, United States, Virgin Island for school year 2020 to 2021. She now serves as the chairperson of Social Studies Department of Ivana Yodora Kian High School, a member of Sixth Century Curriculum Development Group, member of Civic Curriculum Development Group, advisor of Ivana Yodora Kian High School Student Council, and a member of Microsoft Teams, Ivana Yodora Kian High School Specialist. Lastly, she is the Vice President for Operation in the United States Federation of Filipino American Educators, U.S. Virgin Island Chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Ma'am Christina Marie Lopez Sinosa. Good morning, Ma'am. Good morning. Good morning to everybody there in the Philippines. It's nighttime here at US Virgin Islands. I hope you are doing well and keeping safe in these times of pandemic. Just like um, in the Philippines earlier, I have encountered a lot of technical difficulties. My slides are not being friendly. And um, earlier I had... Uh, a very busy schedule because currently I am also the teacher of the year for my school, for Ivana Yodoraken High School. Um, can I go ahead and share my slide, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, before I begin with my talk, this is actually a very simple session. I just don't want this to be a very... Um, formal professional development thing for you, just like what you are doing always, because I know you are all overwhelmed, but I will be sharing some of the things that we are doing in the Virgin Islands and in the US as a member of the Virgin Islands Curriculum Development Group and the VI-centric curriculum group, or curriculum development group. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen now. I think it's a little bit delayed.
Mr. Isidro, could you please tell me if you are sharing, uh, if I am sharing my screen correctly? Because I, I could see in my other device that the YouTube Live is quite a little bit delayed with I am presenting. All right. Okay. I see it now. Good day, everybody. This is Miss Senosa. And welcome to my Gamifying Online Classroom New and Engaging Approach in Teaching Session. Are you ready? Let us now begin. Grab your laptop or desktop computer, iPad, or tablet. Today you're going to learn more about interactive classroom games timeline, and slides. Okay, what I have shared with you is actually one of the things that I do in the classroom in which it's those things that I normally do in the classroom. I am a technology person. I am a technology teacher. So I am sharing this always with my children for them to develop this sense of love of learning. And of course, their technology integration is very important. Technology... Technology in integration is very important because it makes your lesson um, interactive. Okay. But now I am going to share with you a screen again. And I'm going to paste something in the chat in which you're going to You are going to enter this link and try to enter the code for quiz online, joinmyquiz.com and enter 418-532 as your code. Go ahead, everyone. This is open for everybody, so you can go ahead and uh, you don't need to log in to your email address. This is open for everybody. So go ahead and try to enter the quizzes and then join with the code 418532. So I could be able to share a screen again so that you'll be able to see how interactive this thing is for you. All right, I have now Ava. If you are using your phone, it could also be... Uh, program. All right, I have the Philippine Educators, Kurt, uh, Kurt, Jonathan. Don't worry, this is actually a practice quiz only for you. And later on, I will teach you how to do this. There are, uh, there are things that we do in the classroom sometimes that makes it boring. However, we'll try to do this interactive for our students to learn. All right, as of now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine participants. I'm waiting for the rest to come because I've seen a lot of participants earlier. Okay, in less than one minute, I think we are uh, about to start. All right, and if you are in your device, you can go ahead and answer the five questions. I have included Tagalog questions in there so that you'll be able to understand. But don't worry, those are not super hard. Those are simple questions so that you'll be able to just learn the platform. Okay, so I have Nell, Catherine, Janie, Jan Michael, Charlene, Rosemary, Ruben Joy, Ava, Philippine Educators, Kurt, Jonathan. I might go ahead and start this one. Uh, please go ahead and try to turn on your music so that 
it will be rewarding for you to join the quiz. All right, in five, four, three, two, one. So you'll be able to see in your screen. All right, the leatherboards. Okay, there are only five questions and the one who is actually having the fast finger to press the correct answer will be the one to be the winner or will be the one to be the number one spot, to have the number one spot. I'm going to share my screen as a teacher so you'll be able to see how this works for me. the organization for you to be able to get your prize. All right. So thank you so much for trying very hard. It was an easy quiz. However, um, I'd like everyone to share something uh, in the chat area or in the Zoom. Okay. Here in the Zoom, you could see that there are some reactions in there. You could go ahead and click smiley, approve heart for the reactions that you are uh, having as we actually have done the quizzes game for the class. How did you feel about it? Go ahead and try to click the reaction part, lower uh, right. Go ahead and click if you feel that it's a clap, if you feel that it's a thumbs up, a heart, a happy or joy, a wow, or a celebration. Okay, all right. So, second question. Go ahead and um, try to click thumbs up if you have tried this game already inside the classroom. All right. I don't think that you are really familiar with this. Okay, so Erica have already tried this one inside the classroom. The Kahoot, uh, the Quizlet, and Quizzes are actually what uh, are actually top three of the most interactive games in the classroom. But what I like about Quizzes, it's a combination of Quizlet and Kahoot. You could see the questions, and then you could also see the choices, and you have that capability of having this multiple choices question, multiple choice questions and true or false questions, just like the other interactive games. 
method that you are having inside the classroom. Okay, now let me go ahead and Yes, um, thank you so much, Hiron, for that uh, reaction. Okay, so um, the second one that I am going to show you is all about making a timeline. Okay, it's a timeline activity, all right, which we call as Sotori.com. It's a Sotori timeline. I am going to show you the stories. These are actually na, the resources that my students made. I want you to see what my students have made, not the ones that I have made. Because as a teacher, we want to inculcate that part that the learners are actually learning, learning and not us, only giving the information. Okay, so this is, these are just new. As you could see, I have a lot of stories already, okay? For the third year that I am using this story, but I am going to show you what they did. Okay, when we have a discussion last uh, semester during the ancient China, all right. So if you are a social studies teacher, if you are an English teacher, literature teacher, um, even you, if you are a math teacher, a physics teacher, a science teacher, you could do this. Okay, this is what we call a timeline making. That is what we call Sotori. Okay, so what they did is to actually make a timeline. All right, so this is ancient China and these informations were actually coming from them. This is not coming from me. I introduced only the things that they, were, that they are going to do in the classroom. And then they are going to make this on their own. So as you could see there, it's just like Facebook. So they are all well versed with it. So they are having this background over, the, over here. And then a short introduction about ancient China, which of course they researched about it. The human origin civilizations. Okay, I think I've edited this one earlier. I'm so sorry. Okay, so this is the Zhou dynasty. Okay, so they've actually put some pictures in it and you could also embed a particular video to add some knowledge and information this one is a long timeline in which you could discuss this lesson to them for the whole hour and it's actually a very good avenue for the students to learn because they could put or they could input their thoughts in here at sotori timeline okay all right, so I am going to show you some stories that they did this week. Okay. All right, this is one of the stories that they did this week, but it's shorter because they only have 15 minutes to do this. So the topic is about humans try to control nature. I like the background because it's actually something like unique, all right? It started from the human evolution until the present time, all right? And then the person actually, or the, my student actually tried to have a title and then have this time over here, the time period, and then try to explain the new stone age, also called as the Neolithic age, and went into something like a trivia. Did you know? Okay. And then inserted also a video. All right, until it ended into the civilization that we are having as of now. So it included also the conclusion of the lesson. Okay, so Sotori timeline is actually not only for uh, teachers who are discussing social studies, but it could also be something like if you create a story, a lot of things that you could do in Sotori because it could build vocabulary activity. It could have a study guide unit review. It could have a note-taking skills. All right. So it could also be in the technology or ICT teachers because it could uh, you could use this as your digital portfolio. Okay. For social studies, of course, the country report. And a lot of teachers are always doing this because it is good for making book report projects. Okay? Hello, ma'am. I'm so, so sorry, sorry to interrupt, ma'am. 
but uh, could you please uh, share the screen because uh, we cannot view it right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I stopped sharing the screen. Uh, please be guided with me, um, is, uh, Isidro. Can you guide with me because I am having a delayed telecast in my other device. So I am going to share a screen again and try to discuss with you. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm so sorry for that. Okay. Shall I go back with making the Sotori? Yes, ma'am, please. All right. So, okay. Round two. Okay. So, this is the Sotori. This is the Sotori.com. This is my dashboard. Okay. A Sotori is what we call the timeline making in which... Um, I am looking at the other device, so I'll be able to see what you are uh, looking at. Okay, so I am going to share with you one of the one of my students' work. Okay, so they've made this this week. Okay, so our lesson is about humans try how humans try to control nature. This is in social studies as well as in science classes. All right, so. Just like Facebook, Sotori, but just like Facebook, but Sotori is like somewhat informative and educational. Okay. So they could change the background, they could create a new story or a timeline. They could change the background, change the title, have a little bit of introduction, and then insert some pictures. All right. And videos. This is a. Uh, a single presentation only, okay? And the second presentation that I am going to show you is somewhat longer, right? This story is about the ancient China. Okay, so the ancient China is having this uh, introduction and then the student attach a lot of pictures and a lot of information, okay? And then the years are also written in there. And of course, there's a video for added, added information. This is a good way for the students and for the teachers also uh, to use inside the classroom because it's very informative. You could have a trivia over there and then in the comment section, the students could answer. So it could be an interactive timeline for everybody. And then you could also discuss this into a one hour or maybe like one hour and a half class time or uh, class schedule, class block schedule. Okay. All right. This is also very helpful for the teachers and the students as well, because when you, they make a project, okay, all right, they just would like to click the plus or the create button, and then just try to choose the embedded tools in there. If you want to have a blank canvas, that's fine. Okay. okay, but then it's very um, helpful for building vocabulary activity for English, digital portfolio for those who are in the field of technology, and the book report project for uh, those who are in the English uh, subject. Right. Can you see the screen well, Isidro? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. All right. So what you're going to do is just to create a story. Supposing I am going to have a blank canvas. Okay. And then just click over here at the upper part. Don't worry, Sotori is free for the first month, but then you could extend your um, subscription by inviting teachers. Okay, so you could uh, choose at least one picture for your um, background and then insert a title. Like, for example, I just would like to try to 
professional development. All right. And then you could write your own story over here if you wanted to, but I'll go ahead and skip that one. And then you could add a picture again out of that, or you could create, insert a link, multiple choice questions to them. If you wanted something like uh, brainstorming activity first, you could have these multiple questions, matching type. This works only not for timeline, but for your assessment also inside the classroom. Okay, supposing I will be attaching a video. All right. So now I am just going to search anything at YouTube or I could go ahead and try to go to youtube.com and search for any professional development videos. And just copy the link. Try to copy it. Here are the three messes. Okay. Try it. Go to satori.com, insert the link, and it will automatically be embedded in your satori.com. And the good thing about making this online is it saves automatically. It's real time. So when you are presenting something, okay, in the class, it could also be interactive because when you share this one to them, they could have also some of their uh, added information. And then at the end of the day or at the end of the period, you could discuss what are the things that you they need to know and what are the things that uh, you wanted to put in a quiz, okay? And as a multiple choice questions. If you have that group activity, group one will have that matching type activity or matching type quiz, multiple choice questions, assessment, etc. All right. Is there any question with regards to Satori.com? All right. I have a problem about the pair deck because it's not responding. So I'm going to share and go ahead with sharing you with a Nearpod activity, okay? I am going to paste another one, another link for you, and you're going to enter. All right, so what you're going to do is, this is just very easy though. You are going to go to joinnearpod.com and enter the code. I'm going to paste this into our Zoom chat. All right, go ahead. Joinnearpod.com or in the app of Nearpod and enter the code B54SV. And I'm going to share again my screen so that you will see what is happening in my teacher's dashboard. This is a collaborative the, uh, blackboard, okay? Or a collaborative board, okay? I just wrote a very simple question. What have you learned today? Write your answers and pin down on the board. Usually this serves as an exit ticket for the students when you are finished in the class already. So go ahead and try to uh, join. and pin down your activity. All right, as of now, I have two students in it. I have Erica, Kurt, Sid, Charles. Go ahead and write your answer and pin down on the board. You are going to share your thoughts. You could also attach an image based on the lesson that I have presented and go ahead and click post so that you could pin on the board what is your reaction about our discussion.
All right. So the teacher has the capability to pin all the answers because sometimes students are not writing those uh, proper things in their uh, uh, pin board. So you could go ahead and try to pin their works. And other students also could hit the like or the heart button if they like the post of the person that have posted his or her reaction, okay? All right, so this is actually like a, go a good way if the teacher is telling them to answer something and then it is a brainstorming activity. This could be a one way of changing the traditional uh, semantic webbing part, okay? And you could use this inside your classroom. So you just have to click uh, check at, and then all of these are posted. Okay, so I have learned about Satori timeline. I've learned about quizzes. Actually, some uh, Americans pronounce this as quiz is. Okay, learn to use different technology. I have learned that learning and teaching process is the new normal. Very good. This session is very informative. It become for all teachers engaged in using technology. I learned how to use Kahoot and quizzes. Kahoot and quizzes are actually a great avenue for learning interactively. Uh, also, try to do the Quizlet. Quizlet is also good because it, it uh, entails or it also um, encourages competition in the classroom. All right. So I might go ahead and try to click this. All right. So if you are the teacher and somebody, some, some of your students or one of your students have posted something negative that, that is irrelevant to the lesson, you could click ahead and, and click this one and delete. But if they are like this, trying to be engaged and trying to be positive, then you could give them a little bit of heart. Okay. Heart design. Okay. The good thing about Nearpod activity is it's interactive also. Okay. I am really sad that the Pear Deck session is not working. It's not being friendly with us, but um, Nearpod is like Pear Deck also. So I am going to teach you how to do this. Right. I'm just going to have a Nearpod because I want that picture later, picture later, okay. All right, how to create a Nearpod activity? You, uh, you see, I have already a lot of Nearpod activities. Uh, this is actually like, um, uh, I'm going to show you how this works for, for uh, live participation. This is a field trip that I have done with my students. Okay, so if I am going to click the student mode or the student view, this is what your students will see. Before I uh, teach you how to do this activity. Okay, so this is uh, their activity this week for me. Our lesson is about Egypt. So they went to a field trip. I put on essential questions <clears throat> and then they explored. They had a virtual field trip, actually. So what they did is actually tried to explore the Pyramid of Giza like a tourist of the day, okay, in a three-dimensional picture. So it's as if that they are entering I'm actually having a Technical difficulty, my internet stopped. Give me a moment, I, ref I, I will just refresh the page.
Everybody can, can you see my screen well enough now? Yes, mommy can see it. All right. Okay. I got cut off. I don't know why. All right. So this activity is in Nearpod also, the one that I have shown you, where the students actually have a virtual field trip. As you could see, there's a three-dimensional picture and they serve as the tourist of the day. Okay. So this is one way of introducing the lesson to them and it's interactive. This is in a student mode. They are learning, they, this could be learned uh, in a synchronous way or asynchronous way. Right. So now I'm going to go back. All right, I will teach you how to use this near part so that you'll be able to use this inside your classroom. Okay. As you could see, a lot of Nearpod activity has been done in my classroom already. But if you want to create a new lesson, then you just create a new lesson and embed the activity. Okay. The good thing about me in Nearpod is that you could search a lot of activities that has already been uploaded by the teachers. Okay. Let's say, for example, you are going to search about mathematics. Oh, sorry. I am in my Nearpod library. Okay. Mathematics. You could search a lot of things in mathematics, okay? Example, multiplication and division, counting numbers, understanding range and domains, and you could use this because this is actually a shareable content. So if you click this one, it automatically goes to your library, and then you could share this lesson to the students. This is actually, uh, you could add this to the library or to your library and you could do the same as we have did later. You could just share it and then get the code and share it to your students and you could play the game already. Okay. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to create a new one. All you have to do is to click this Nearpod activity and then go to Nearpod library and try to search a content that will actually suit your subject area for English, math, science, social studies, technology, and computers, and others. I'm, uh, I'm not really sure where, if there are some Filipino teachers, okay, or some Filipino activities in here, but in quizzes and in Kahoot and Quizlet, there are some Filipino terms already embedded, okay? All right. Okay, so I hope you have learned something today. Actually, I, uh, I was rattling for a moment because my internet was not helping me uh, earlier and that the Pear Deck session is not working very properly. That Pear Deck session is an interactive way for you to, to, uh, to do, supposedly. However, um, because of this um, unprecedented technical difficulties, Okay, so this is what I could share for you as of today. If I have a session, uh, I will have a better um, sharing of ideas for you for the next round. Because the Pear Deck session is not working properly, I am going to share with you my Bitmoji classroom. This is actually the one, one uh, 
the first one that I did during the first day of the school. So I might go ahead and try to give you at least a glimpse of this. If you wanted a tutorial about this, I could give you uh, a video later after the uh, training because this is not part of my session for today. Okay, so welcome to my classroom. All right. Okay. This actually has a story. All right. This is a Bitmoji classroom that we did for the first part of the class. Okay. So it has a story. Just wait for it. The kids are actually having this uh, Bitmoji classroom, very interesting, because the teacher gets to be creative, everything in there is done by the teacher, and then there's a creative story behind this Bitmoji classroom. Our course is all about history. So today, we're going to discuss why do we study history? History is fascinating. It's more than just dates and facts about long-ago events. And in today's ever-changing world, it's more important to study history than ever before. But before we talk about why, we need to ask, what is history? No, it's not the study of the evolution of dinosaurs, that's paleontology, or how glaciers created mountains and valleys, we call that geology. Yes, these events happened in the past, but history involves the study of humans and their actions. It's understanding how past events impacted our world. Think about it. Is it more important to memorize the exact amount of fuel the Apollo 11 used for the 1969 lunar mission? I'm gonna step off the limb. Or to consider the impact landing on the moon had on the world and our understanding of human capabilities. That's one small step for man. The larger argument of how the Apollo 11 mission impacted science, technology, and humankind is what makes history. So, why do we study history? To guarantee we're not doomed to repeat it? It's true that by studying history, we can learn from our past mistakes, but we can also gain insight into why people, cultures, governments, and countries are in their current state. Take the country of Iran, for example. Tensions between Iran and the West came to a head during the revolution. 1979, right. when the U.S. supported monarchy was overthrown and an Islamic. Okay, everybody. So I guess that's it. Um, my Pear Deck session is not working. So I've shared with you my Bitmoji classroom instead. But it's not part of my, although it's not part of my session, uh, I will be willing and uh, willing enough to share the information on how to use that or to do that or to make that Bitmoji classroom next time. To wrap things up, okay, I know that we are having a lot of challenges in this new normal with regards to the education sector, but I would like to advise everyone that do not be overwhelmed with all the things that's happening make only or use at least one technology in the classroom, okay? If projection is the only way that you could help yourself, okay, in order for you to discuss something to your students, then start with the projection itself, okay? And then try to embed some applications that is useful for you to learn. Last and final thing is, Idra, I forgot to share something for the teachers. This is just a bonus one. Uh, I know that a lot of us are actually having this um, projection activity only. What I am sharing with you is the classroom screen. I know that some of you are familiar with this. This is not um, a paid account. It's, a, uh, it's actually a free account that you could go. Uh, just go to uh, classroomscreen.com and click launch classroom screen. This is a good avenue for you to project. 
Okay? This is the start for having this uh, uh, technology inside the classroom. You could change the background if you want to. Okay? Um, if you have a file in there or if you want something like historical, you could change the background. My internet is quite slow. Okay? All right. So I changed the background now. What I love about classroom screen is that you could use these things in here. Okay, you could click and you could add the calendar. You could have the clock. You could have the stopwatch for PE. It's very useful. For timer, it's very also useful because supposing I'll be having this as only like 10 seconds. All right, let me go ahead and try to have this set into 10 seconds so that the teachers will just see how effective this is. You could change, or five seconds maybe. All right. You could change the music on what music you select. I, I will, this is my favorite one, the Super Mario. And then try to click play. When you are having a group activity, this is a good way for you to have a timer. Okay, so it, it did not actually have the Super Mario sound. So that's the sound. You can also have the traffic light, okay? Just for them to see, stop, wait, and go, all right? The text, if you are stating something in English, all right? You could also have the draw for mathematics if you want to. Uh, the QR code, I'll just skip. Okay, you could also add some images, YouTube and webcam, if you want your camera to be in it. You could have, uh, if you are playing a game, you could toss a dice who's going to be next. Okay, right. If you have a name in there, supposing I'll be having these names, and you are going to choose a reporter who's going to be the first and the next, you are just going to choose a name. And automatically, it will raffle the names and you will have a name for the first or the second or the third reporter. Okay, so classroom screen is a good way to project. Also, I'd like to share this one. You can download this Epic Pen. It's free, but you could purchase one also. If you want this one to be used, you could go ahead and try to choose a pencil. You choose a color, supposing I'll choose yellow, and then you could write already even in your powerpoint presentation if you are presenting a our powerpoint presentation you could write in it and you could erase this one you could erase something you could erase the things that you are actually writing already okay so this is these tools are actually helpful for you so go ahead and use it because the best thing about it is it's free and it's shareable All right, I guess that's all for today. My time is up. Okay, thank you so much, Mom Christina Marie Lopez Hinosa. Your topic mm -hmm. today is really very inspiring. And I hope uh, our educators uh, learn something new that they can be able to apply in their teaching strategies. I am so open to now... questions. Any questions, I think, Isidro, uh, I am more than willing to answer. Okay, ma'am. So we will now proceed on the open forum in the question and answer portion. There is somebody assigned in our committee to select questions to be asked in this segment. We would like to encourage everyone to raise relevant questions on this topic presented. We have allocated two hours in this uh, virtual conference, so we will cater questions as many as we can. When raising your question, kindly introduce yourself and name the institution and the name of the institution you are affiliated with. So, ma'am, we have uh, one question here from our participant. Uh, she would like to ask, what is your advice uh, to our fellow teachers who are still hesitant to use technology? Actually, um, it's very difficult, okay? It's, uh, especially in, uh, uh, in our days, okay that we are not really properly trained okay but my advice is work only with one technology i have shared with you a classroom screen inside the classroom when projecting works for you at first then go for it 
Okay? You don't have to be shy. You don't have to explore a lot. Before I went into something like, uh, uh, like in a uh, comfortable way of using technology in the classroom already, I went into something like a beginner. So I, I am a, I, I'm having a zero knowledge. When I went to, the, to Qatar, I don't know how to use the, what do you call this one, the smart board. But eventually, you learn by constant practice. So don't stop researching and don't stop attending trainings like this because this is very useful. And if you have... If I have time, I could lend the hand. Would you message me on Facebook so that we could have a virtual training separate from this one? So that I could be with you like uh, five is to one because it's more conducive and it's more helpful when we are only few. Okay, ma'am. We are looking forward for that. Yes. And now we have another question, ma'am. What do you think is the biggest problem uh, that may arise in using technology? And what is your tips on using these platforms? Actually, in the US, we are 100% online. We work from home because of COVID. And the greatest problem earlier before, because I'm not really using Zoom, I was projecting. However, if my students are not telling me, Miss S, your screen is not projecting. So how would I know? I think that's the biggest challenge. So you always have to ask your students, just like what I have said to Isidro a while ago, Isidro, is my screen projecting well? Eh, am I heard? Because if I'm going to talk and talk and talk and my students are actually not seeing anything, then it's a failure. Everything is a failure. Okay? As much as possible, I wanted to create a very interactive classroom so that a lot of opportunities, and you could know that your students are learning. It's a validity when your students are learning, when the results come back to you, or the reports from those interactive games, interactive slides that you are having. Okay, mom, that's really something that we can relate because today mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we have a very intermittent uh, signal because there is a typhoon actually coming in the country. So these are one of the problems we encounter. Thank so you, hope. Isidro. Actually, um, I thought that my session is actually tomorrow. Uh, it's not so... <laughs> that's why I rattled a while ago. Charlie, is it today? Because we have a 12-hour gap. I really thought that it's supposedly tomorrow. However, Charlie said that, no, ma'am, it's 30 now in the Philippines and 29 in your area. So, well, this is it. So they will be done, they say. Yes, mom. So I think that's also one of the advantages of technology that despite uh, the distance across us, we're able to share knowledge. And we are very thankful today because we really learned something. We really learned a lot on how to use this technology. Okay. Is there any more questions? I think there are some. Okay, mom. So we have also another question because uh, we have learned that you are an outstanding teacher is, or have been awarded as an outstanding teacher several times. Praise we would God. like to ask, uh, especially those who are aspiring educators who are also watching with us today via YouTube, what is the best advice that you can give to those aspire, aspiring educators? Well, um, that's a very simple question, but that's, a very difficult, that's very difficult to answer. I guess uh, be yourself. Okay, um, I know that we are not all perfect. I have, as a matter of fact, I have not graduated with flying colors. Okay, but you see, your experience will teach you uh, how to be better educator. And just be yourself. And don't forget, always ask questions. When you are not sure of anything that you do or anything that you are doing, always ask questions. Okay, you could, you could Google it, but have someone or ask someone 
someone that you could look up to, an administrator maybe, always ask questions. That's what I do. If I don't do, uh, if I don't know anything, I will ask questions. I until I learn the portal, until I learn the platform, and then that's the time that I'm going to apply it. And look at me now. I'm not bragging, but totally, um, I have gained the respect from my previous job also in my present job because of that. And always be humble. No matter what, always be humble. Okay, ma'am. That's uh, really a wonderful advice that we will take into consideration. And now we have another question. What is the main difference of teaching here in the Philippines, Qatar, and the U.S. Virgin Island? Because we have learned that we have, you know, really you know you have a very um, diverse experience teaching yes. with these different countries with really diverse culture well i might be an international teacher for a long time i left philippines approximately last 2012 so i was out of the country for uh, eight years already but you see we also see unity in diversity Okay, so I guess that's what I do. I love uh, learning cultures. But when you're asking about educational uh, thing, well, in the Philippines, the challenge is that integrating technology in the classroom is very limited. Okay, first and foremost, the teacher could not afford the device and the school could not give, the government could not give a device to the student, uh, to the teachers, the ratio of the student and the teachers, okay? In Qatar, we have a British curriculum uh, method of instruction, integrating also Philippine education curriculum because I work at the Philippine school. But I also see that the Minister of Education trying to have their programs ready every time because I'm more active in the curricular activities in Qatar. In the Virgin Islands, this is where I grow as an educator because they have given me the opportunity to step up when it comes to not only in the classroom setup, but as a developer of their curriculum. So as of the moment, we're working on the Virgin Islands centered content or book. Uh, I, I, I think it has a budget of $500,000 from Senator Francis office to be printed as long as it's finished. So I am the only Asian and Filipino member of the particular group. Just be yourself and try to be confident in everything you do. And always bear in mind that it's cliche, but my, uh, my, my tagline is always action speaks louder than words. When I talk, I see to it that I walk my talk. Don't say something like you are not going to accomplish because people will be very, you know, keep an eye on you, especially that you are not having uh, the same skin color from them. You're different race from them. So prove yourself to everybody that you are beautiful with a heart and with a mind too. Welcome Miss Universe, no? All right. Thank you so much, Mom. Uh, you're really very inspiring and you're bringing honor to our country wherever you go. So the next question here is, technology can sometimes really very overwhelming. So Mom Erica May Logronio would like to ask, for beginners, what is the best application you can suggest for smooth teaching? Smooth teaching, I think it has to be classroom screen. The one that I've shown you, classroom screen. Okay, if you're using Zoom, classroom screen is a great tool for you to use because you could have a timer, everything is in there. You could uh, attach a picture, uh, you could attach a video that they could see. Okay, um, actually those, those things that I have shared with you, the Nearpad, you could have that uh, as an activity for live Zoom because it's connected to Zoom technology. Okay, but then again, if you're a beginner, don't try to uh, explore first, but try to project first. The first thing is projection. Master the projection first. And then try to level up with integrating 
technology like interactive slides, like the Google Slides, the one that I've shown you, the Bitmoji, because it's very easy and it's, you know, it's exciting. Even you as a teacher, you're excited to see that your Bitmoji is moving. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. We have also another question from Sir Kadir uh, Kimola. Is there any tool you can recommend for mathematics instructions? Nearpod, sir. If I could share, uh, because Nearpod is actually having that uh, pet simulation. It's embedded already. Let me go ahead. Uh, I'll try just to share a screen, Isidro, for a while, okay? At least give me like one minute. So that uh, the mathematics teachers, I know I'm not a mathematics, teach, a mathematics teacher, but what I love about this pet simulation is you could um, embed some of the mathematical tools. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead. Okay. Can I share a screen now? Yes, ma'am. You may do so. Okay. So I'm going to share a screen. Okay, so Nearpod, this is what I have done earlier, okay? So you could attach a video. Uh, actually, you could have these activities as a slide, okay? But for mathematics and physics or science, you could have this one, okay? Math elementary school, middle school, high school. Are you a high school teacher, sir? Everything is in there, look. Okay, if you're going to click this one, the balancing... Okay, all right. So now if I could click create over here, just uh, try to save and exit this one so that you could uh, particularly see. All right. So this is now the pet simulation. And if I could click the live participation, look at that, the live participa participation plus Zoom, but it's in a paid account. So if I could click that one, your students will be able to see the, the activities or the code that I have given you earlier. Just copy and paste this one. Uh, you could go ahead and paste it in a Zoom meeting. Okay. So this is your student mode. Sir, could you see? Yes, Okay, so if you are having this student mode activity, okay, this is what your students is going to have as an activity. Um, I know that Nearpod is, uh, okay, so the pet simulation. So you could go ahead and try to add the bricks. Okay, so people, add people. Okay. So you could go ahead and try to, uh, what do you call this one? Um, play around with the tool, sir. You could discuss this one, 80 kg, 20 kg, All right? So everything is in there. Trying to, Nearpad gives you everything and it's interactive. So students could also solve the problems over there. You could have the ruler, could also the marks, the level, everything is in there. So Nearpad, I think, uh, and Pear Deck, but I can't get into my Pear Deck session as of the moment. That's what my problem is. I can't get inside to my Pear Deck session because it gives you the ability to draw in the Pear Deck session. So they could have this answered by themselves. Okay. So go ahead and explore near pad. All you have to do is just to create an account via Google, Yahoo, and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. These platforms are free for you to use. Okay, ma'am. There is another question, ma'am. How about for Filipino subject? What do you think is the best recommendation uh, in terms of using technology or what specific app do you have in mind? That's the challenge that I have for Filipino subjects. But I've seen some quizzes in Filipino subjects. Uh, let me go ahead and share a screen again for you. Okay, so... I'm now in Zoom. I'm sharing a screen. Okay. So can you see my screen now? Yes, ma'am, we can. I'm asking you. because sometimes uh, 
It's as a little bit delayed. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, ma'am, we can view it. Okay, so just click explore. Okay, and then all you, all you have to do is to click search. Example, pangalan. Okay, in Filipino, there are quizzes also. Okay, so all you have to do is just to try to look at the grade levels. Okay, so there are people who have uploaded already pangalan. So this is first to fourth grade. Okay, let's click this one. Uri ng pangalan. Okay. Uri ng pangalan uh, Pambalana Pantangi. This is a good Filipino quiz also. Banda Tahas Lansakan Basal. Okay, so you could go ahead and start a live quiz if you want to. But if you assign this as homework, this is asynchronous learning, meaning you are doing it offline, you could change the date or the deadline to your students. Meaning it will automatically lock up until Friday, 11.30 p.m. Okay, all you have to do is to click continue and then uh, share the link to them. Mm -hmm. Or just tell them to... Enter the code, copy this one, put that, uh, send a message to them via Messenger or whatever platform you are using, and then they could get in and answer this one. But if you want something like a live classroom that we have done earlier, then you click live session. Start a live quiz like this. It works like a Kahoot and quizzes. So go ahead and use for Filipino teachers. Uri ng pangalan or uh, quizzes, or you could use Sotori.com. You know, I use Sotori, the timeline making. It's it's not me who is actually making a timeline. I just introduced to them the platform, and I use this Sotori making as a project for my students. So it's always not the teacher who is going to make something for your classes, you could ask the student to use the platform and do it for you. Is there any questions still, Isidro? Yes, ma'am, we have another question here from Ma'am Esmeralda Fajarda. So she would like to ask, how to use Kahoot or Quizzes app while having using uh, Google Classroom? Because most of her pupils are using cell phone in their oh. online classes. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, who is the, the teacher's name? Um, the name of the teacher is Ma'am Esmeralda Fajarda. Okay, Mom Esmeralda Kahoot is actually works actually works the same as um what they call this one works the same as uh, quizzes. So if I may log into my account, I have two accounts in Kahoot. One is actually paid by my school as a chairperson, and one is on my personal one. So I might go ahead and share a screen with you via my personal account. So if I'm going to share a green uh, a screen again again with you. You know, this technology I have been using, Kahoot, I already used, I think, since 2015 or 2016. Okay. So I just click continue for free because this is a free account. The other one is paid. It's an educator, educator's account, and I don't want to use it because it's, from, it's coming from my school. Okay, so this is my Kahoot. When I click the Kahoot games like this, uh, just like quizzes, you're just going to click this one. Okay, so let me uh, let us just say I am going to play the Virgin Islands Kahoot question. So you just click play. Okay, this one is like quizzes, the asynchronous one, and this stitch is like the one that we did. However, Kahoot doesn't have the uh, the multiple choice question, uh, no, the one that, they, that we had like, uh, you are going to answer uh, the fill in the blanks, it doesn't have that one. It doesn't have the poll also. It has to be a paid account. That's why I shifted to quizzes. 
Okay. So, this is like uh, quizzes earlier. So, if you're ready to join, the students will just... Ma'am, you are just going to click this one. Copy this and then paste it into your Google uh, Classroom dashboard. Okay. So, after that, you could see that there are players in here already and you could click start. moment I have zero players I have zero student in there so if your students are actually having uh, joining that www.kahoot.it and then enter the code 5567346 the students names will be posted in here and then you're going to click start and that's the uh, that's how Kahoot works okay well the disadvantage of Kahoot is uh that's the, what I have said earlier it doesn't have that capability like the quizzes had. Okay, it doesn't have the poll survey. Uh, the one that you did for quizzes, the five questions, those are different um, applications for uh, quizzes that you have done. The multiple choice questions, true or false, the poll, uh, the survey. Okay, I'm huge. So start from Kahoot. Okay, copy uh, copy and paste. The, the, the answer is just copy and paste. Copy the www.kahoot.it and then also the code and then paste it to their dashboard. And then they could get in already. Yes, Sidro, next question. Um. There is another question from um, uh, from Sir Kadir Kimula, ma'am. Ma'am, quizzes can be useful but for problem solving. No. It's only an interactive game. Uh, it has... If, if your quizzes entails a problem solving skills or activity, um, it can't. Because it doesn't give you the, what do you call this one, the drawing tool. However, uh, you could do that in Nearpod, sir. Uh, can I share a screen, Isidro? Yes, ma'am, you can. Okay, for a while. I am just going to go back to the Nearpod library, okay? Bear with, ma uh, bear with me, sir. Okay, I am going to click create and then... I am going to add a slide. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sir. I am not sharing my screen. <laughs> you see that one? I'm supposed to share my screen so that, sir, uh, I forgot the name again. Okay, sir, if you are in your near pad, okay, you just click add slide. And then this is an embed. These are embedded activities. So you just have to click the activities. Okay. And then you click draw it. This way, the students could have the, what they call this one, the drawing activity for you to do. Okay. So example, if you could have three plus one, uh, three plus one. Okay, add or add three plus one. I don't know how to actually make a, what they call this one, or you could also add a timer if you want to or for five minutes or so. Okay, provide a background image if you want to, but if not, you could click save. This is just a practice, sir, okay? I am going to paste the uh, save and exit, and I am going to... Sorry. Okay. I am going to share the screen and I'm going to save and exit. And I'm going to copy the and paste the code in our um, Zoom chat. And then go ahead and try to answer it so that you will see what is the effect of this drawing tool for mathematics as an activity for problem-solving activity. All right. So 
uh, you could go ahead and try to join the Nearpod activity. Okay. Where's my chat? Okay, I am not going. I'm stop. I'll stop sharing now so I could see the chat. Sir, I'm going to paste only you, sir. Okay, it's not for everybody, but everybody could join also. Sorry, it's joinnearpod.com. I'm missing the J. Okay, sir, go ahead. At least we could try this one for mathematics and see how this works. It's it's a good way to. I've used this one for decoding hieroglyphics. So, you know, for social studies subjects, we have this hieroglyphic symbols, picture symbols. I put A, B, C, D. Uh, or like, for example, the Nile River or Nile, and then they, they put the drawings in there. All right, so... This is the student's view that I will be projecting for you. Did you get to uh, uh, activate your Nearpod, sir? Isidro, I'm going to share a screen if sir could not do it, okay? I want him to do it because he's a mathematics teacher. All right. So this is how it works. When the teacher gives you the code and the link for the join Nearpod, example, I don't know how to create a comprehensive mathematical question. Okay, so add 3 plus 1. So you could go ahead and add 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. Or you could go ahead and try to have this text or embedded or uh, the text color or insert a text. Let's insert a text. Okay, or you could erase this one. Oh, there are yeah, this is good for math. Okay, so three plus one equals four. Right. And then you click the, uh, the mouse outside. So I'm going to erase this one. Okay, all right. But you could go ahead and try to explore this one. You could use this also as your, uh... oh, so three plus one, I'm sorry. I put three plus, three plus four. All right. So, you know, there there is an eraser, there's a drawing pool. So, all right. Did I answer your question, sir? Go ahead and explore Nearpod. It's a very good way for you to learn something new and to introduce students with technology. And the good thing about this is that you could use this offline and online. What I am doing is projecting it live. But you could also use this as part of their assignment or homework. In America, they call everything as assignment. In the Philippines, we call assignment as homework. So that's another vocabulary. Okay, ma'am, I think we got a positive response from Sir Kadir Kimula. However, he cannot use his... Uh... Gonna join the activity right now because it's just using a cellular phone. However, thank you, Mom. Oh. He said that's what I want to know. Is it so Thank you so much you for that use information. Use pad via cell phone. You could touch okay. the screen. Okay. Sir, okay. the good thing about Pear Deck and Nearpad is that you could touch your screen. But if you have a touch screen, cell phone, you could students could also touch the screen by using their um, stylus if they have a stylus pen. Or an Apple Pencil, if they are very rich. <laughs> or their fingers. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, before we end, we would like to ask any concluding words from you to inspire our participants this morning. I guess um, I have said my piece earlier. Okay. But I maybe I just would like to thank the educators for teaching, you know, uh, teaching is something like an, not a lucrative profession. We are not going to be millionaires or um, become rich in this profession. But thank you for touching lives. Thank you for being a teacher. It makes me happy knowing uh, somebody is a teacher like me because it requires a lot of patience 
And you have a great responsibility of molding, honing the students holistically. That's, that's the only way I could say. Just thank you. I am forever grateful because you are, you know, making this profession the noblest profession of all. Cliche as it say. Okay, ma'am, thank you so much. Actually, we are receiving a lot of positive feedback regarding your talk this morning. And we would thank like you. to we read started. some of these comments. Uh, we have a comment from Mom Grace Rafal. Thank you so much, ma'am. Your topic is very great and interesting. I learned many things from you, ma'am. Okay, we thank have you, another comment. I, I guess from... we have a system glitch early, but at, at least we manage. Go yes. ahead, Isidro. We have another comment from Sir Kasparov Ripedro. These are interesting and interactive approaches in teaching. So we, all, we have also a comment from Sir Kadir Kimola. Thank you so much, ma'am, for a very informative and helpful presentation. And another comment from Mom Catherine. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your expertise. I really learned a lot. I enjoyed your first activity. Nice one. And we have another comment here. Thank you, PICE21. PICE really helps me in my teaching in this new normal education. I become quite techy because of many webinars that I have been attending with you. This is my sixth webinar with you. A million thanks, PICE21, for a great learning I gained from you. And we have also a comment from Sir Chris Chudosho. Thank you very much, Mom, for a very informative discussion. And Thank you, ma'am, from Jonard Carrion. A comment from uh, ma'am Erika May Longronio. Thank you so much, ma'am. And there's still a lot of comments, however, it's sad to say we have limited time to read all of these comments. But we would like to thank you, ma'am, from the bottom of our hearts for teaching us a lot of things today. All right, thank you so much, Pais and Pasem. Actually, I'm a member of Pasem already, officially. I've tried to be a member. Um, I don't know, um, I am not campaigning, okay, but uh, a lot of teachers are actually needed in the US. However, it was stopped. So is there anybody who are applying in the US for teaching? Uh, would actually message me um for some updates i am a member of uh, filipino educators in the us so if you've encountered that group in facebook i am a moderator there so go ahead and try to join that uh, platform so you'll be able to be updated with everything in hiring about in the us okay mom thank you so much for being gracious and for spending time uh, answering all these questions and also for you know opening opportunities for future educators who would like to apply as teacher abroad before we end i just would like to read some important announcement for our participants this morning so first to earn certificate of participation you must fill up with the attendance and evaluation form the link is posted on our facebook official page and the POMI YouTube channel, and also here in the comment box in Zoom. The digital copy of your certificate and the PDF format of the presentation will be sent on your respective email within 24 hours. Attendance and evaluation will be verified as a requirement before we send your certificate. So paid participants who will not receive their certificate of participation within 24 hours kindly send a message on official Facebook page of Philippine Institute of the 21st Century Educators or email us at centuryeducators21 at gmail.com. Participants who applied for membership, there will be an additional 180 pesos shipping fee if the participants wishes to have an original copy of her certificate. Membership of at least three affiliated organizations will be free of charge or free of delivery charge on the preferred address. For those who failed to watch it live, you still have the chance to get your certificate of participation you can still watch the delayed telecast of this virtual conference. The video will be posted on our Facebook official page and in our YouTube channel. You can also sign up with attendance and fill up the evaluation form. 
Okay, so good morning once again. That's all for today. But before we end, I would like to invite everyone for the upcoming virtual conference that we will be organizing. And it is entitled Predictors of Research Productivity and its Significance in the Emerging Educational Mechanism. So our speaker is uh, Dr. Leonor Leonilo B. Capolso. He is the CEO of Beyond Books Publication, book publisher, educational consultant, researcher, educational editor, reviewer, and a motivational speaker. And also we would like to invite to another virtual conference entitled Educational Mentoring and Coaching, the key to continuous professional development. Our speaker is Mr. Prakash Chandragiri. He is a principal of Goodwill Activity School, Lakeside, Pokhara, Nepal. So it will be on November 21, 2020 at 3 p.m. as you can see in our screen. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for um, attending our virtual conference and we hope to see you in our future events. So before we end, we would like to request everyone to please open your camera for our technical will be uh, taking your pictures. Could we please open our camera because we will have a photo opportunity with our speaker. So once again, mom, thank you so much for being so gracious this morning and for catering a lot of questions. Uh, we find your discussion very interesting and we also receive uh, receiving some positive comments and we hope to see you in our future activities and by that time hopefully we can have more time to discuss all this uh, technology because as we can see um, two hours will not be enough to learn all of this uh, knowledge you're sharing. I am very much willing, Isidro. Uh, babawi ako, no. I have such a technical difficulty. My perdic was not working. It's, it's the best application I could give you. Yeah, the, the pair deck. And some of those I, I'm having right now, like a mobile legend thing in the class. So maybe next time around, they could use that inside the classroom. Yes, ma'am. Nonetheless, we learned really a lot of things this morning, so it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are we ready? Technical, are we ready for the screenshot? Okay, panel one. Three, two, one. Okay, panel two. Okay, wait. <laughs> Just hold on. Okay, we have now on the panel two, three, two, one. Okay, are we done with our panel two? So we now proceed with our panel three. Okay, smile. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you so much. A virtual clap for our speaker. Congratulations, mom, and we hope to see you again. Yes, I will be willing to do the Google Slides because I, I know that a lot of you are doing it. Google Classroom, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much. Bye. Bye.